Nothing is more fun than doing a math word problem. Now, a lot of you out there are saying, please, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just stick with math. Comedy is not your thing. Well, listen, it is my job to get you excited about doing mathematics. And here is a nice, lovely little uh, word problem that uh, we're going to get into right now. So the first step in solving any math problem is to read it. So let's go ahead and do this right now. It says uh, the average of five consecutive integers is 15. What are the numbers? So this is not that difficult of a problem, assuming you know what these two words mean, consecutive and integers. And I'm not going to explain uh, the definitions of these words just yet because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this all on your own. So if you think you can go ahead and solve this problem, put your solutions into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer in just a moment. And then I'm going to walk through step by step on how exactly to solve this particular problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we go. The average of five consecutive integers is 15. What are the numbers? What are these integers we're talking about? Well, here they are, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So this is the answer, okay? These numbers are obviously one after another, after another, after another. So that's what consecutive means, and these are integers. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. But uh, this is a correct answer. So how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let me go ahead and uh, give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and some stars so you can celebrate your success solving a nice math word problem. And uh, this uh, uh, math problem that we're doing would be something pretty typical in like a pre-algebra, Algebra 1 course. So if you're taking... Um, you know, of course, it involves algebra. This is a pretty standard type of word problem that you could encounter. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual solution right now. And the first uh, three steps to uh, solving any math problem, especially a math word problem, is the following. The first is to read the problem. The second step is to reread the problem. And the third step is to read that problem one more time and make sure you, ex you know exactly what the question is. So here... The average, okay, so we're talking about the average of five consecutive integers. So we need to think back, how do we calculate the average of anything? We'll talk about that in a second. So we're going to be finding the average of five consecutive integers. We need to know what these words mean here is 15. We're looking for these numbers, okay? So you know, you got to really fully understand the question. Uh, too often, students will just read the prompt one time and they'll just start doing math. Okay, don't do that. Read the prompt, absorb all the information in the prompt, and then you're going to actually have to go back to the prompt and pick out uh, pieces of information in the prompt uh, to uh, set up equations, etc. But before you even get started, always read the prompt and then model the information in the prompt. Now, in this particular uh, problem, you know, it's hard to draw like a sketch or a diagram, but we'll talk about exactly how we need to model this problem. But let's get into these words here, consecutive and integers. I basically uh, showed you, um, you know, by looking at the answer, gave you, you kind of get a, uh, an interpretation of what these words mean. But let's talk about integers, okay? So integers um, are a subset of the real numbers, okay? And if you're at this level of algebra one, pre-algebra, et cetera, you should have a good solid understanding what the real numbers are. So the real numbers, again, on the number line, we have zero right here. Then we have all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers. We have all these fractions, decimals, whole numbers, natural numbers all over here. And then over here, we have all the negative numbers, negative fractions, et cetera. So the integers are these numbers, okay? Uh, to be technical about it, uh, it is the positive and negative of the whole numbers. Now, we don't need to review uh, all the different numbers of the real number systems, although this is something you should know, but these are the integers, right? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and of course these uh, numbers continue on this way and this way. All right, so the problem is saying that we have three consecutive integers, and consecutive 
means we have a number and then we have the next number, the next integer. So for example, if we were starting with one, uh, one and two are consecutive numbers, okay? Because they're next to one another. And then here, these are three consecutive uh, numbers or three uh, consecutive integers, all right? So we're looking for numbers like this, not numbers like one, four, and seven. All these are, uh, although these are integers, they're not consecutive. We're looking for things like five, six, seven. Okay, so now that we have an understanding what an integer is and consecutive is, let's just make sure we understand how to find the average. So if I wanted to find the average of one, two, uh, and three, okay, one, two, and three, how would we find the average? Okay, so anytime you take on a word prom and there's um, some sort of term in here, like average, you have to stop and just think about, hey, what does that mean again? And always use like a simpler problem, a real basic problem to review. What do I need to do to find the average? Uh, oh, I have to add these up, one plus two plus three, and then add, if I wanted to find the average of one, two, and three, I have to add up all these numbers and divide by how many numbers I have. I have one, two, three numbers, so I add up all these numbers and divide by three. Of course, this would be what, one plus two is three, Three and three is six, so six divided by three is two, okay? Now, if you look here, two is an average of one, two, and three. What's interesting about this? Well, two is right in the middle, okay? One, two, and three are consecutive integers, and two is that middle number, okay? Now, technically, two is also the median. I don't want you to get kind of, um, you know, uh, too distracted here by these uh terms. You should know what the median is as well, but two is the average, and it happens to be the middle number when we have uh, three consecutive integers, okay, or odd number amount of integers. Keep this in mind because this is going to be kind of an interesting little um, uh, observation that we'll show you at the end of this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this together, and uh, what we need is some variables. We don't know what these numbers are, so let's just kind of make up a variable to represent these integers. So let's let x represent our first integer, okay? So if we had one, two, and three, and x is going to be our first integer, what would be our next consecutive integers? Well, it would be x plus one, right? So whatever this number is, we add one, we get to the next integer. So our second integer here would be x plus one, and then our third integer would be what? X plus one plus another one. And in fact, we would, that would be X plus two. Okay, so X plus one plus one is our third integer. And then X plus, this is X plus two is our third integer. Add another one, that's X plus three, that's our fourth. Add another one, that's X plus four, that's our fifth integer. So we can assign all these variable, variable terms here as um, representations of our integers. So we have our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth integer. Okay, so now the problem says the average, okay, the average of all these integers is 15. So in order to solve for an unknown variable, okay, you're going to need to set up an equation. So you got to go back and reference uh, the problem again and be like, okay, the average of three of five consecutive integers. I, think, I don't know if I said three, if I said five, I believe. Anyways, the average of five consecutive integers. Now, right here, we just kind of um, use some variables to represent uh, these consecutive integers, right? X, X plus one, X plus two, et cetera. And we know how to calculate the average. So if we can calculate the average of these, of, um, these five consecutive integers, we know the answer is 15. So we're gonna have to pull all this information together to construct an equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, so here is our five consecutive integers. Our first is x, here's our second, x plus one, here's our third, x plus two, here is our fourth, x plus three, and here is our last, our fifth consecutive integer, x plus four. The average of uh, these five consecutive integer, integers is going to be 15. So how do I find the average of anything? Well, we have five numbers here, right? We have one, two, three, four, five. We need to add up all these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and divide by five. So let's go ahead 
and construct that right now. So here is our um, five consecutive integers, one, two, three, four, five. We're finding the sum of them. We're adding them all up and we're dividing by five because we have five numbers. We just know that when we do this, the answer is 15. All right, so here it is right here. The average of five consecutive uh, integers is 15. So at this point, what we need to do is solve for x. Now, this might seem like a difficult uh, equation to solve, but it's actually quite easy. Let's go ahead and get into that right now. All right, so here is our equation, and we want to solve for x. So we have all these x's in the numerator, so let's just add them all up. This is going to be combining like terms. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. So that's going to be 5x, and then we have 1 plus 2, that's 3. 3 plus another 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. So our numerator is going to be 5x plus 10 over 5 is equal to 15. So this is our equation now. Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can solve this particular equation. The easiest way to solve this equation is to factor out the greatest common factor in the numerator. But there's another approach as well. As long as you can get the right answer, that's what counts. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do this uh, two ways. First thing I'm going to do is factor out the GCF. So notice here I have a 5 in common with both of these terms. So this is 5 times x plus uh, 10 is what? 5 times 2. I can factor out these. this 5 here. They are, This is the greatest common factor. So I can just take that 5 out like so. And if you're not quite sure if you factor out the correct GCF, you can just multiply that 5 back in and see if you get back to the original equation. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is 10 over 5. All right, so that's always a good uh, check if you're not quite sure. Now, the advantage of doing this way is now this is 5 times x plus 2 over 5. Notice here I have a lovely opportunity to cross-cancel these uh, 5s right here. So that leaves me with the equation x plus 2 is equal to 15. All right, so hopefully I didn't misstate anything, but of course you could see the work right here. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to cross-cancel these 5s. This was the GCF. Now this is going to make my life super easy. I'm left with the equation x plus 2 is equal to 15. So all I need to do is solve for x is subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, and we get the answer x is equal to 13. Okay, so that's one approach. That is the correct answer. We're not done answering the question yet, but that's what x is equal to. But let's go ahead and take a look at another way we could solve um, this problem, this equation. So another way you could have... Um, approach is, is to look at this as a proportion. We have two equal fractions. This is one fraction. Notice we have one fraction bar, and we can think of 15 as a uh, one fraction as well. Anytime I want to think of a number as a fraction, just put it over one. So anytime you have two equal fractions, again, this is a fraction bar, this is a fraction bar. We don't have three equal fractions. We don't have like three uh, fourths over here, okay, this is like one, two, three. We don't have that. We have specifically two, one fraction equaling another fraction. You can think of this as a proportion. Let's just look at a quick example. If I have one fraction, one half, equaling to another fraction, what's a fraction that equals one half? Ah, let's use something easy, four over eight. So anytime you have a, this is by definition a proportion, two equal uh, fractions, you could simply use the cross product. In other words, um, when you have one fraction equaling to another, the cross products are equal. So you can see here, 2 times 4 is going to be equal to 1 times 8. 8 is equal to 8. Okay, so just a quick review about proportions, just to make sure you fully understand this, because remember, we don't learn math in a vacuum, all right? This all connects together. All right, so here, let's go ahead and use the cross product. So 5x uh, 5x plus 10 times 1 is simply 5x plus 10, and 5 times 15 is 75. So now we can just go ahead and solve this basic equation here. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. That leaves me with 5x is equal to 65. And then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 5, and I get x is equal to 13. All right, so which, of course, is the same thing I got over here. All right, so x is equal to 13. Those are two methods you could have taken. All right, so x is equal to 13. We're looking for those five consecutive integers. So remember, 
we had our um, uh, variables uh, set up in this manner. Our first integer was x. So x is equal to 13. So our first number is going to be 13. Our second number is going to be x plus 1, or 13 plus 1 is going to be 14. And then you could see here we have x plus 2. Uh, 13 plus 2 is 15. Then we have 16 or 13 plus 3, and then 13 plus 4 is 17, and there you go. Here is our five consecutive integers. So the average of five consecutive integers is 15. Now, if I was to add all these up and divide by 5, you'd get 15, but here's the interesting thing. What is the middle number here? It's 15, okay? So um, when you're thinking about the average, there it is right there. It's that middle number when you have these consecutive values, right? That's also the median, but in this scenario, the median and the average is the same, just like one, two, and three. We had an odd number, okay, of here's five numbers. This is three numbers. That center number with consecutive integers is the average. Of course, it's also the median, but you can kind of all see how this ties together. So, you know, um, some of you kind of, you know, actually, if you really were thinking about that, you're like, okay, we have five consecutive integers, five consecutive integers, and the average is 15. You could just plop that number right there, 15, right? You'd be like, okay, 15 is the average, and they're consecutive, so I need a 16 here, but then I need to balance this out right here with a 14, all right? So you'd be like, okay, then I'll need a 17, because I only have three numbers. Here, now I have four numbers, one, two, three, four, but I can kind of balance it out over here with three, so now I have one, two, three, four, five numbers with 15 in the middle as the average. So if you took that approach, that's actually very impressive as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.